Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, welcome back to Fallout Tale of Two Wastelands. Well, last time, we took our first trip into the DC ruins, exploring the metro tunnels. But much more importantly than that, we received a love letter from our darling sweetheart, Mr. Burke. Oh my flippy goodness. And today we're heading out into the wasteland again, this time a heading west, because I know I've got a reward waiting for me outside the Jury Street Metro, and then if we just head a bit further north, we have got ourselves some military goods promised to us by Three Dog, but um, can't help but notice that brings me very nearby to Arafu, so... Okay, today, treasure hunting and vampires. Oh, that sounds like just the thing. And if we're heading to Arafu, obviously let's speak to Lucy West in Moriarty's saloon first. I'd like you to deliver this message to my family in the Arafu settlement. I haven't heard from them in months, and I'm worried. As soon as you get there, talk to Davis West. He'll be glad to pay you for the trip. And there we flipping go, Lucy wants me to investigate her family, who have gone a bit quiet. And there we go, Arafu is now on the map, as I say, very close by to a Hamilton's hideaway where there's some treasure awaiting us. But, um, yes indeed, how about rather than going directly, we head over to Jury Street Metro and work from there. Oh, and on the way past, we get to say hello to Dogmeat, lovely. Last time we ran into him, he had like 500 hit points, but now I'm level 7, so he's got 1,500. As for me, I'm on 210. So yeah, this dog is like 7, 8 times tougher than me. Okay, let's just get where we're trying to go nice and easy. If we're lucky, we won't hit the random encounter trigger. I don't know precisely where it is. A robot over there. Don't worry about that. I've set a custom marker on Jury Street Metro, so we don't need to worry about any of that. Just eyes open, because uh, this is Fallout 3, and thus the wasteland can just descend into nightmare nonsense chaos at the slightest provocation. So just, you see like right there, that's a robo brain. Okay, I've got an answer for you buddy, because I have been picking up some pulse grenades, so okay, you're in trouble now. I say he's in trouble. He may or may not be in trouble. Because, yes, I don't actually know precisely how tough he's going to be. That grenade just bounced off a tree. Bloody useless. Okay, just put two over there. That should do some... There we go. Welcome to flipping EMP grenades. Alright, rest of the journey seems to be a pretty peaceful, all things considered. A handful of iBots, but they're just spreading Enclave propaganda. No problem whatsoever. So, here we go. Jury Street Metro, though we're not actually going inside. You can, there's a couple of raiders down there, there's a few other bits of peace. In fact, there is one fun thing down there, but okay, we will cover that another day. I am here to find Prime, and uh, Prime is... um. Let's just say he's not doing so hot. Those raiders strapped me with explosives. You've got to help me. Oh, hello. Sorry. Um, I wasn't expecting you to show up at this exact moment in time. Hello. Um, I mean, I'm okay at explosives. I'm going to be honest, I could be better. But I'll give it a go, sure. Help, Bob. Okay, um, that, that didn't work out for, for him. I am really sorry. Also, are you planning to actually, like... Explode at any point. Okay, not the best bomb, apparently. He's just, um, he's just fine by the Luke's offer. Yep, there he goes, enjoying his new life over there or something. As I was saying, good old Prime sadly has lost most of his limbs with the exception of uh, that one leg. So, uh, yes, indeed, we get all of his take from the job. Giant pile of frag grenades, some drugs, etc., but more importantly, he comes with the Zhenlong Assault Rifle. Basically, this game's unique variant of the Chinese Assault Rifle, which is... I mean, it's pretty good, and... Ooh, hang on. It takes 5mm, not 5.56. Well, okay, that's definitely different. So yeah, traditionally the Zhenlong Assault Rifle was pretty much a standard Chinese Assault Rifle, but a little bit better. Damage 9 DPS 75. In a world where, yeah, random robots and basic super mutants have got some decent DT, that is not going to cut it. Now, admittedly, my gun and strength is nowhere near good enough for this thing, so we might want to revisit it later. But I'd say for now, that's not going to be part of the regular rotation. I just didn't want to miss out on a unique gun while it was available. 
Oh, and I think we may have found the, um, yes, raiders that strapped the bomb to that guy, potentially. So, okay, that's, that's all absolutely a-okay. Do I still have that missile launcher? Because now I'm much further away. Right, just line you all up. And this should do nicely. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. One of you's got a flamer, haven't you? That's, that's good right there. And no, 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 no. Okay, we're just going to be tossing this thing away in a second. So we may as well have some fun with it. And you've got a flamer, don't you? Oh, buddy. I've got terrible, terrible news about... I think you may have been already dead, actually. Now, as I say, we'll come back and visit the metro station proper another day. But there is one building I think it would be a crime to miss while we were passing by this area. And that is the supermarket right here. And uh, oh, I love this place. And okay, I know it looks like a trap, which it kind of is, but it's not. It's just a really fun machine that's been built out of uh, physics objects. Follow the arrows and let it do its thing. So, uh, battering ram drops that, starts a chain of dominoes and... Starts a chain of dominoes that's going to... Starts a chain of dominoes that's going to keep going, isn't it, Bethesda? There we go. That is going to trigger the pitching machine. That's going to drop the gas canister onto the trap. The trap is going to cause an explosion. The explosion's going to cause that generator to actually, uh, yes, cause a huge gas explosion. And the gas explosion is going to cause over in this corner, given the gas walls are filling the store, as you may have noticed, given I'm just, uh, you know, slowly injured, broken one arm. That causes this skeleton to drop from the ceiling and generate... I'd forgotten it generated missiles, but you know what? That'll do nicely. Together with, uh, crucially, hang about, there are definitely a couple of skill books in here. That was one. There definitely should be another somewhere, right? There it is. It was trapped under the Skellington. So, tumblers today, a lot pick up by two, and Nikola Tesla and you. Beautiful. And stepping back outside again, this here is why I very carefully curate neutral comrades. Oh, there's the bomb guy. He's still, still doing his thing. One day, maybe he'll explode. Who bloody knows? Because yes, if you don't have neutral karma as you step outside this location, indeed uh, many locations, uh, you will be approached by either regulators or talent company. And they can be very, very nasty. Best way to avoid it, just stay neutral. Don't be good or bad. Neutrality, that's where you want to be. And as I've just nipped back to Megaton, yes, the Junlong assault rifle just grabbed some 5mm ammo. Nice thing about this thing is... Uh, 36 bullet, nice, good, fire rate, not bad, not bad at all, but um, just look at the condition down at the bottom right there. This thing, like all Chinese assault rifles, it falls apart in seconds. That was always the downside. They're the superior weapon in terms of DPS versus the standard assault rifle, but their condition just collapses. And in a world where, yes, enemies have got DT, it's just not a good idea. Damage 9, even with a high DPS, is just, no, not very good at all. Okay, back to Jury Street, and actually, I just realised something. This was uh, not part of the plan, but it's kind of genius and gonna work out brilliantly for me, which is, uh, yes, this beautiful little set of dominoes. Uh, can't have notice that um, some of those boxes uh, are sugar bombs. Which I'm going to be wanting to hoover up because uh, I might just be uh, needing those uh, in just a bloody second. Okay, bright new day and yes indeed, I'd say I now want to head uh, pretty much due north to Arafu. Because uh, while there's a couple of interesting things uh, over to the right, yes, one of the key things to understand about the Fallout 3 Wasteland is uh, sometimes uh, the better option is turning one enemy against another. Here we go, just perfect. That'll be the bridge of Arafu, right over there. Meaning, had I just followed the road by the river, we would have passed by, what's this called? Kaelin's Bed and Breakfast, I believe. Not an insignificant location. They've got dogs, they've got numbers, uh, potentially a bit of a nasty area to take on. Oh, and Fallout 3's just being its usual chaotic self, which is, yes, I was planning to come to this interchange right here, because this interchange can be where you spawn in some outcasts, but, um, turns out I might not need them. B 
because Crazy Wolf Gang, one of the traders, is already right here. Together with his caravan guards, and those guys are both pretty tough. Traders in particular are very hard to take down, so this convenient caravan is going to act as my reinforcements against these raiders. I don't even need to start this. He's already pulled out his firearm and started firing. This is this is beautiful, though admittedly his bodyguard was a, a bit slow off the mark. So, okay, me and this guy, we're just going to take out the raiders together. Because why wouldn't we? Oh yeah, they're all piling in now, so I can just help out. They're not even primarily shooting at me. Somebody's shooting at me. Mine, someone's definitely shooting at me. So just take that dog's head off. You are all very, very welcome indeed. Someone else goes down. Someone over there. That's a good solid hit. As long as I get at least, I think it's 30% of the damage done... I still get some experience. That is uh, too far away, unfortunately. So we'll just be doing this, you know, by hand. That will be absolutely fine. More raiders uh, piling in. Don't mind me, lads. You are now more than near enough for me to do the job. That's what I wanted to see. Head explosion. Everybody loves a head explosion. Also... There's more chaos going on in the background. I don't know what's going on. Some people are running away over there too. Welcome to Fallout 3, where everything's nonsense and nothing makes sense. And there we go. One of their leaders goes down. That's 30 XP right there. We are making a lot of progress very, very fast indeed. And don't forget, these guys are... Oh my. That's an incinerator. You don't exist in Fallout 3 usually. Yes, the incinerator, of course, most famous from the Boys and Steve in New Vegas. So, uh, yes, rather than firing a stream of flames, uh, fires a much longer range blob of flames uh, that can do damage over time. I tell you what, that's only 12 weight. Right, get this old girl out. Make sure we don't miss anything while we are passing by. Silence 22 SMG, which is, I mean, silence, but that is garbage. So don't worry about it. Okay, couple of guys upstairs. Oh, this is perfect for me just to put some flames on them. And there we go. You're taking damage over time. Everybody takes damage over time. Screw you. Barely taking any upfront damage. But the damage over time is uh, not bad, you know. And just keep focusing. Get on top of... Something else is exploding. Someone's got grenades or something. I don't even know. Right, take this out. That's going to be more good experience. But yeah, heavily armored raiders in metal armor or whatever. They can show up, but they're a good 30 XP a go. Not bad. Not bad at all. Just as soon as we're done. Down you go, buddy. Lovely. Right, there we go. Caitlin's bed and breakfast has been taken out. Okay, on to Arafu itself. Oh, but on the way. Okay, one of my favorite dumb areas in the entire game... There is a baseball field uh, right there. And you may notice in the baseball field, uh, if you manage to get eyes on it without the raiders spotting you first, there is a raider who spawns uh, with a baseball bat. And uh, all they do all day, every day, is run the bases. That's it. These raiders just enjoy playing baseball. So uh, I'm not going to interrupt them. I'm not going to shoot them because they're having a lovely time not hurting anybody. Aside from the, um, people that they hung up as corpses uh, behind the actual, you know, batting place. Whatever that's called in baseball. But they're already dead. Not like there's anything I could do to help them now. And here we are at Arafu. I like this place. Obviously, yes. The sign originally reading, careful, for some reason. Possibly a warning to slow down because you're reaching a bridge or something. But yes, some of the letters have been worn off. It becomes Arafu. Lovely. And uh, just pay attention to uh, some of the stuff dotted around uh, right here in particular just before you arrive uh, a big old shack that is currently uh, locked up and uh, a whole bunch of brahmin corpses still first things first at the old classic uh, let's say hello in rather dramatic fashion uh, to mr evan king hang on you're not one of them i nearly blasted you in two get over here before they spot you now what the hell are you doing all the way out here and no trouble, buddy. Just here to deliver a message, okay? Getting some practice in being a courier before we eventually take a holiday over to New Vegas. That's great, but I got bigger problems than being the town post office right now. The shit's about to hit the fan in this cesspool, and I don't think I can stop them. Okay, that sounds like a you problem to me, because I'm being paid to deliver this letter. So just point me in the right direction, buddy. 
So, first things first, he just wants me to say hi to the local families, make sure they're okay. Most of them are absolutely fine. They just want to, you know, not be attacked by the family anymore. Things get a bit more interesting at the end of town, however. So, house number one at the end, Evan King's house. Can't get into that just yet, but um, let's just say we'll be back for that later. More importantly, yes, the West residents. The people we're trying to deliver the message to. And it is unfortunately rather bad news. They appear to be, yes, very, very dead indeed. Which is especially sad because Davis West was supposed to be the lad who was going to pay me. Still, this moment here in the quest is super cute because at this point, yes, how much you know about what happened here is a function of how well you can figure out what happened to these guys. And that's a function of your medicine skill. Though the game does keep that to itself. It doesn't say, hey, would you like to examine these bodies as a medicine-y person? Instead, the message that pops up just changes depending on how good you are at medicine. So anyone can determine, hey, they're dead. With Medicine 30, however, which I do have, you can identify the problem is bite marks to the neck. If you get up to 50, then you can spot things are a bit suspicious here, realising that based on the size of the wound, there should be way more blood splashed about than there actually is. At 70, you can figure out that the bite marks would only be consistent with human teeth, and at 90, you can identify some residue that suggests whoever did this came from a train yard. So a mysterious group of raiders called the family, dead people in their houses, probably something I should sort out, I guess. Wait a minute. When you searched the West's place, did you find their son Ian's body? And on top of that, one missing person too. This has to be the work of the family. I've caught that weirdo leader of theirs talking to Ian down by the river. Look, I know I've asked a lot of you already, but you have to find that kid. He deserves better than all this. And here's where this gets rather interesting to my mind, which is, if you just ask him, hey, where do you think the family might be? I think they live somewhere east or northeast of here. Problem is, they always travel in the dark, so I can't see exactly where they go. There's all kinds of places they could be hiding, like Hamilton's Hideaway, the old Moonbeam Cinema, or Northwest Seneca Metro Station. Evan King is straight up wrong. They are not in any of those locations because Evan King has no way of knowing where they come from. He's estimating a rough direction and it's true they are located in a building in that direction to the northeast but every suggestion he makes is incorrect because he has no way of actually knowing. The only way to actually get the correct information right now is to have high enough medicine to have detected the oil residue that points you at a train yard. If you do have that high medicine, then you can report that to Evan right now, and he will give you the correct location, Moresti train yard, which we've been to already. If you don't have that information, you simply get sent in the correct direction, which I think is a lovely touch. You don't even have a quest marker at this point to guide you any further. Now fortunately, the game's not that mean. If you go to Northwest Seneca, there is a ghoul in there who will point you in the right direction. But the route he suggests you is incredibly inefficient because you have to go underground all the way to Moresti. It is a difficult, trap-filled route. Not a good idea in the slightest, but Tama. Um, before we get into any of that, there's one thing it's very easy to forget. But you may recall that we began this mission because Lucy West asked me to go and find her family. And uh, we just did find some of her family. Her parents, specifically. And they're dead. Very dead. And this is the only point in the mission you can go and tell her that. If you go and deal with Ian right now, when you go back to Lucy West, she's sort of interested in what's going on with Ian, but there's no opportunity to tell her about her parents. You've actually got to go during the mission to get a response to that. So, nip back to Lucy, and yes indeed, a voice line it is very easy to miss. I am so sorry, but your parents are really, really dead. What? No. Oh my god. I should never have left. I knew it. Now they're all dead. Oh, wait a second. What about my brother? Okay, work in progress. I will get back on that right now. You must find him. Please. He's all I have left in this world now. I just gotta know if he's alive or dead. It 
can't just end this way. So there we go, an extra line from Lucy West right there. Still, just because the family actually aren't at these locations, that doesn't mean we're not visiting them. Instead, a quick shortcut off the bridge, down into the water, beautiful. Let's get over to Northwest Seneca, because yes, there are one other place, there's some rather good stuff we might want to grab. Don't be fooled by the metro station name and sign and all the rest of it, by the way. Outside of, yes, this central area on this map, none of the actual stations do anything. They're all completely self-contained dungeons. So in the case of this station, just like West Farragut, yes, the actual path down to a theoretical platform has already collapsed. Instead, we've just got a couple of ghouls. You're not... not here to try and steal my secrets, are you? You see, Murphy here is a drug dealer who makes a very specific drug. It takes three things to make Ultra Jet. Two of the ingredients I got plenty of. The other one is a little harder to find. Sugar bombs. I distill it down to its base contents and add that to the formula, then presto, Ultra Jet. For every box of sugar bombs you bring me, I'll pay you 15 caps. So, you in? So there we go, yet another example of someone who will pay good money for a random bit of trash out in the wasteland. Walter pays good money for scrap metal, Murphy here pays good money for sugar bombs, but arguably more importantly, it also adds Ultra Jet to his inventory that you can then buy. Basically, he spawns more of this depending on how many sugar bombs you bring him, though to be honest, despite the name, it's um, it's not very Ultra. Jet is AP plus 15, Ultra Jet up to plus 40, which is nice I suppose, but honestly compared to Jet in Fallout 4 in particular, it just doesn't do enough to make it worthwhile. But you know what, in case of emergency, I'll take one a hit, sure. And as I say, this is the guy who can point you in the right direction when it comes to the family. Sure, I stay away from them and they don't bother me. It's a good relationship. They live somewhere east of here. If you're feeling foolish, I think there's an underground way through their place, deeper into the metro station here. And there we go, that gives you a direction. At the back of the station, there we go in this highly irradiated area, Moresti Service Tunnel. Do not go through this area, because all it wants me to do is go to Moresti, and I already know the way there. Although on this occasion, I'm going there overground because there's one more location we have to hit. Don't forget, of course, we've got more treasure hunting to do. Oh, and on the way, we've actually got our first run in with a mile oaken. Okay, they did look slightly dumb back in these days, didn't they? They just looked like a guy wearing a rubber suit like they were a Power Rangers villain. Marvelous. Still, here's our destination just past the small island with a scavenger on it. Hamilton's Hideaway, magnificent. Very easy to miss. It is just a random gate in a rock. Okay, I was about to have a nice chat about this area because Hamilton's Hideaway is a very interesting dungeon. A decent size seems to indicate, yes, a fairly large underground habitation. And yet, in the base game, there's basically no lore about it whatsoever. It's just a bit of a mystery, though. I know for a fact there's some cut content that never made it into the game. And it would appear it's been restored by the mods. The short version is, yes, there was a guy and he didn't trust vault and honestly, given everything we know these days, he was quite right not to. So he just built his own personal vault for him and his family. And eventually a friend of theirs showed up, but he was horribly irradiated and in the end, yes, everything just kind of went a bit tarma. Unpleasant in general, shall we say. But yes, probably the reason this content was cut in the first place is because uh, this note says there was a vault near Burkittsville that their friend Frank tried to get into, but was ambushed by cannibals nearby. There is no such vault in the game. Burkittsville doesn't exist in any of the Fallout play space we have access to, so this may indicate something that was going to be in the game at one point, but they decided not to include it, and thus the notes were cut, with nothing to replace them, leaving this area that was a bit mysteriously empty, despite its size. Still, that's not why we're here, no no no, past a couple of raiders and rat scorpions, uh, hidden away over here, and seriously, this is so easy to miss because uh, it's in this tiny hole in the wall, hidden behind a pillar, we've got what we need. The cell door that can only be unlocked with a given key, and only three dog can give it to you. 
And here we've got ourselves, yes, ammo boxes, etc, etc. So uh, this is still kind of a random luck. We'll see how lucky we get. Incredibly unlucky so far. Darts are very common. We don't need them in the slightest. Still, I will not say no to a blood pack. We might be about to go and make some friends who will really rather appreciate those. Still, there is a guaranteed spawn of a mini nuke in here. Then we've got ourselves a one of guns and bullets and one... You're not supposed to be here. Okay, just look this up. Apparently, Wanda, to match the restored narrative in this area, is a restored gun. So, there is a unique assault rifle called Wanda in the game's files. It just doesn't show up in the base game. So, they just put it here to make Three Dogs Stash a bit more special. Fair enough, I suppose. Comes with... A fancy scope and whatnot, but honestly, I can't overlook the fact that is... Uh, I mean, that is terrible damage and DPS. I'm so sorry, Wanda. You may have a lovely name, but that doesn't mean you get to come along. I'll take the stealth boy, though. That's good, at least. So, that's two locations checked off, leaving only the outdoor cinema. This one, it's just not even worth visiting. There's a handful of mutants dotted about, but there is basically nothing of value at the outdoor cinema in the slightest. Instead, thanks to Murphy, we know where we're going. Back to Moresti, a straight inside, by far the easier approach. Not completely easy, mind. Do be aware, yes indeed. The vampires are not keen on being, uh... Oh dear, my repair is apparently... Not good enough for that. Hang about, I could have sworn my repair was good enough for that. Alright, gamer, you win this round. Actually, no you don't. And there we go, some nice free XP. Right up to the point where, um, yeah, something like explodes and whatnot. Given now I have, like, no armor. And just, I definitely can't deactivate that. Explosive 60 to turn off the pram traps, but we're okay for the time being. I do enjoy the creative traps here, though. Such as, yes, a tripwire tied to a pitching machine that will just toss stuff into the back of your head. So, okay, you know what? No, 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 no. We're turning off all of these. Uh, I took comprehension for a reason, damn it. So, uh fixing things. And now, there we go. Nice easy 5 XP. Your stupid pitching machine can't do anything to me. Magnificent. So yes, if you follow Murphy's advice, you can go through a much more dangerous underground path. Grenades everywhere, etc, etc. I'll tell you what, while I'm actually here, there we go. I'll be having your grenades too. Why the flip not? But no, much easier to just come that way. So, like, you know, one pitching machine, two... Three traps, one was hidden underneath that bloody Mylurk. Dear, oh dear. Still deeper and deeper. Finally, we get to the family and say hello to Robert here. Whoa, whoa, slow down there. This area's off limits to everyone but the family. Where the hell do you think you're going? So, naturally, I can just speech check him. Though, yes, it is a bit of a difficult pass, all things considered. However, if you've got a letter for Ian West, you can go straight in, no trouble. Though, fun fact, you've got this option even if you don't know Ian West is inside. I.e. if you just come to Moresti straight away with the letter without having gone to Arafo. The quest does catch up a little bit later because eventually you get the option, go and investigate what happened to Arafu. You get a special line with Evan King if you do it that way round. But honestly, it doesn't change much. It's just amusing you can tell him you've got a letter for Ian West without having any reason to believe it, Ian West is inside. I will admit though, in this mission, there is a lot, and I do mean a lot, of running backwards and forwards. Which isn't helped by the fact that, uh, yes, to get down here, you've got to go down this long tunnel in order to get into the station, to get upstairs, to speak to Vance, to diddly diddly d. It is a big area and involves a lot of running back and forth, but... I do like this group. I feel like it's almost a bit of a shame we don't get to spend more time with them because the idea of the family is kind of cool narratively because basically it's like a cannibal support group is what we're really dealing with here in a society that accepts that cannibals just exist. Children are literally raised as cannibals. Say in Andale, we get to see it in action. So we are cannibals, but no one in the outside world is ever going to accept that. We're going to be hunted down and killed and whatnot. So we need to, one, stick together. And the way he engineers this is creating this complicated, very fancy sounding mythos, which borrows elements of old vampire stories. It's very, very cool indeed. Still, before we get into discussions about vampires, let's make sure we understand what's going on here. Vance, 
What happened to Ian? Ian is at a critical moment in his life right now. After all that occurred in Arafu, he is scared and confused. It would be ill-advised for me to allow you to speak to him while he decides what he wants to do. And yes, indeed. Come on, Vance, let's spill the beans. Ian's hunger for flesh overwhelmed him. It drove him to kill his parents. Because of my intervention that night, he stopped just short of being lost forever to his cravings for flesh. And there we go. Ian is not a cannibal. We don't use the C word next to the family. It annoys them. And yes, while a speech shit will get me inside straight away, there are 10 million other ways to get inside Ian's room. For my character, the easiest one straight away is the shopkeeper, Carl. Because Carl is very easily seduced by anybody with Black Widow, immediately giving you the password you need to get up to Ian if that's what you want to do. Meanwhile, if you've taken Lady Killer, Brianna's the target for you. She can also be seduced. Now, those are the obvious ones, but there are actually some really obscure perk related speech checks that exist at this moment in the mission, too. So, join me in a parallel dimension nice and fast, where I've just, uh, yes, used console commands to boost myself to level 8, because, uh, yes, there is a, a very obscure perk related speech check in this area. Impartial mediation, brilliant perk already, 30 points to speech as long as you're neutral in karma, which you really want to be to keep the bounty hunters off ya. Yeah? If you take that and then hunt down a Justin, who is one of Ian's closest friends inside this area. Ian, what do you want from him? And it turns out because I've got impartial mediation, all I want to do is make sure that, well, he has received impartial mediation. That Vance hasn't admitted any facts. I'm determined not to take any sides. So a very, very obscure perk related speech check there, which is absolutely marvellous. And uh, there's a couple of these dotted about in these missions. So, for example, Scoundrel does the same thing with uh, Holly and Brianna, I believe. Though they all functionally do the same thing, it's just a way of getting the passcode or key to access Ian's room. But back to the original universe, because we don't need to be doing any of that. There is no reason whatsoever to break into Ian's room against Vance's wishes. No, 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 no. If you don't have good enough intelligence or speech with Vance, you just figure out that what's going on is they think they're vampires, or at least they are teaching a support mythos in line with vampire stories. Just go to the terminal and read the five laws. Which gives you plenty of very clear information as to what you're dealing with. Drinking blood, for example. Although I do enjoy how the vampire mythos is uh, adjusted and adapted uh, to actually suit their purposes. So uh, one of their laws is uh, seek not the sun's light, embrace only shadows. Uh, this is our refuge. Not because they're weak to sunlight like a vampire would be, but simply because uh, they can't run around during the day. They would be spotted and are hunted down by townspeople, etc, etc. They've got to go in and be sneaky by night because uh, there's not many of them and they're not very popular. But what's also very interesting is, remember those cows I asked you to, uh, yes, take note of earlier? Well, Vance took note of them too. I don't want an incident like this ever again. I was very clear we are not to represent ourselves in a hostile way. The killing of the town's Brahmin was an act that was both unnecessary and potentially damaging. I'm dealing with a very delicate situation in this town. I will not have it undermined by actions of revenge on a humankind. Our time will come. I promise you. So somebody murdered the cows and they weren't supposed to and that's part of what's caused some tension between the family and Arafo. And if you pay enough attention to the conversations that just dynamically happen in this area, you can figure out who it was. No one's been by here in ages to buy anything. Vance is crawling up my ass causing that mess hey there, Arafo. cutie. How's it's your it? fault in the first oh, yeah. place. You didn't have to go wild. Okay, I guess. And as you can see right there, there's a pretty clear indication that Carl went a bit bananas during the recent Arafu mission. There is another conversation that also makes that even clearer between Carl and Vance. But because Carl spends so much time hanging out in his store and Vance spends a lot of time hanging out upstairs, they very often don't bumble into each other to have that conversation. But there are several conversations involving Carl that make it pretty clear he's the one that went bananas and murdered all the Brahmin. Anyway, having read all the entries on the terminal, or just asking around with his various followers, uh, yes, your character can always come to the conclusion he knows what's going on. 
Do you think I believe I can turn into a bat and fly away? Of course not. Do I cast my image in a mirror? Absolutely. Now, ask me if I believe these individuals from every corner of the wasteland need me to give them a sense of purpose and identity. I have shown these people the ways of the vampire. I've provided them shelter, organization, and a sense of belonging. So, now we understand each other a bit better, Vance. Can I just, you know, go through, have a chat to Ian? Very well. I will allow you to speak to Ian. Perhaps you can help him come to grips with his greatest enemy, himself. And there we go. Got Vance's permission. Don't need to go seducing anybody, manipulating anybody, any of the rest of it. Anyway, that gives me what I need to speak to Ian just around the back of the train station here. Though, if you want to, yes, you can also activate internal security that will just murder him. And activate protectrons that will murder everybody. Though, there's really no benefit to this whatsoever. There is no advantage to just killing the vampires. It is much, much better to come up with a diplomatic solution in every way going. I'm a mutant, a fucking freak. The only person I was ever able to talk to was my sister Lucy, and she's gone. No one gives a shit about me except Vance and the family. Can't you understand that? So, funny thing you'd actually mention Lucy right there, which is, uh, yes, if you happen to speak to Lucy West first, and you've got the letter, this mission is uh, much easier to sort out. One, you can just walk in past Robert, no trouble. And two, once you get to Ian, just show him the letter, and he immediately decides, you know what, I've got a sister, she cares about me, maybe that's enough to cling to. Which I'm broadly happy with, because, okay, Vance is building these people into a family, but Ian's already got family out there, Lucy, who seems to care for him. So, you know what, here's the letter, after that, you can come up with your own conclusions, buddy. She, she really misses being home, and she's asked about me in here a lot. I think I had it all wrong. I shouldn't have come here. I bet Lucy is feeling just as bad as me. Please, tell Vance I've made my decision. I'm going home to Arfu. I hope to see you there as well. I'm just gonna gather my stuff together and say my goodbyes, then I'll head on back. And there we go. I think that's the right ending in many ways, because uh, you're not persuading him one way or the other. You're simply presenting him with uh, all the available information, and he comes to his own decision. And that broadly is all there is to the actual main meat and potatoes of this mission, which, again, I think is a bit of a shame. I wish this mission were a bit more interesting and uh, long-winded. I wish there was more time to explore this idea of uh, taking cannibals and forming this strange vampire mythology support group for them. It's just such a cool idea. But instead, we now reach, well, what kind of feels like it should be the end of the mission, but most definitely is not. This may have uh, the most post-mission cleanup of uh, any mission in the entire Fallout franchise. So, step one, we need to sort out the business between Arafu and the family. As long as you maintain this level of civility, please proceed. So, nice and simple, here we go, with intelligence, or medicine, or speech, all sorts of checks you can use. Yes, indeed, we can just advise him, hey, how about you don't sneak into town at night and drink from people's necks, etc, etc. How about instead, you move over to trading blood packs for protection? Okay, not phrased it that way, it does kind of feel like, yes, basically, they're running a protection racket where they're literally stealing the people of Arafu's blood. And Arafu has, like, four people living in it, so I feel like this isn't necessarily going to work in the long run. There aren't enough people in Arafu to make this hold, but screw it, we're going to go for it anyway. And yes, if you want to get as much as you possibly can out of this mission, the correct solution is definitely Arafu donates blood packs in exchange you protect them. Agreed. Please, take this proposal to Arafu. Speak with them and then return to me with their decision. I thank you for showing me that your kind can be trusted after all. It is a lesson I will not forget. Now, what of young Ian? Tell me his decision. He's decided to go back to, actually. It saddens me to lose one of my flock, but I believe everyone has to follow their own path. All I was attempting to do was guide him. Now it seems that responsibility has fallen upon you. I hope you will be more successful. Please, I want you to take this. 
Consider it as an apology to you for all the hardships you had to endure finding this place. Goodbye, human. Our time together has been rather educational. You see, now that there, that sounds like the end of the mission. She said goodbye and everything, but no, 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 no. We'll be back in like a few minutes. Don't you worry, there's plenty more as needs to be done yet. There she is, the heroine of the day. Oh, that's more like it. Now people are treating me like a big damn a hero. I love it. I know. I talked to Ian, and he told me everything you did. I don't know how you did it, but goddamn am I glad you walked up that ramp and lent us a hand. Thanks again, kid. Consider yourself welcome back here any time you're in this part of the wastes. Alright, there's some XP, there's some karma, blood ties is complete. But no, no it's not. There's still more that needs to be done. For example, one, we haven't actually talked about the Alliance shouts. Let Vance know he's got a deal. We'll do it. I'll speak to the others. I'm sure they'll agree with me. Okay, so he came round to let's swap our blood for protection very easily. Really would have thought you'd want to, you know, put that to the other people first. But sure, hopefully they go for it. So, let's talk about this wonderful world that we live in now. So, for example, um, as a starting point, if we just uh, go over here, the cows come back to life. I mean, maybe they're supposed to be different cows. The old cows got, um, you know, taken away, and now there's uh, new, better cows there. But still, it is rather odd that the cows just seem to have uh, popped back into existence. Maybe they weren't dead. Maybe they were just asleep. Let's just say that. Oh, but we're still not done with the vampires yet. Straight back down below. I will dispatch Alan to Arafu immediately to help serve as their guardian and honor my end of the agreement. Your efforts surpass those of the average human. In fact, I feel almost like you are a member of our flock. If you ever wish to learn our ways, you have but to ask. And there we go. Despite the mission being over, the Alliance wasn't actually complete. Because until you actually come back and speak to Vance, he doesn't send anyone to protect Arafo, which is a bit on the odd side, but fine. And yes, indeed, we 100% want to learn the ways of the vampire. This is a unique perk you can't get in any other way. Drink deep of the blood. Allow not a drop to spill. Feel the warmth as it spreads inside you. You are becoming one with the life force of another. They lend a part of themselves to you. For a brief moment, you are two entities becoming one. This is an extremely fancy way of saying blood packs are now better healing items. Speaking of which, just like we picked up with Sugar Bombs and Murphy earlier, you can turn in blood packs to this ladder if that's what you want to do. Nice easy source of caps. And before we go, no reason not to rob these bastards blind. Not least as... Uh, oh my. Recon armor. Okay. I think we do need a replacement for the Vault 101 jumpsuit. That thing is starting to uh, struggle a bit. And this is just... Oh, so much more DR. And speaking of the store I just robbed... Uh, yes, this place is um a bit on the weird side. One in particular thing stands out, which is... Uh, the lad sells blood packs, and he sells them for less than I can get for donating them to Vance, which is very, very peculiar indeed, actually. And on top of that, he sells 20 scrap metal, which is, yes, basically 200 caps or 200 karma, depending on how you trade them in with Walter. So this guy is basically just giving away free money. There is also one other item I would love to have, but it is a bit on the tricky side to get your hands on. Vance in his room has a sword cabinet containing Vampire's Edge. It is very light, weighing only one. It's got a good crit chance on it. It's a decent weapon, but 75 a bloody lockpick to get inside. And while Vance does have a key on him, Vance is incredibly difficult to pickpocket. His perception and sneak are both really, really high indeed. So, um, yes, just not being noticed around him is extraordinarily difficult. So how about we don't worry about that at all and instead say, you know what, if we want a sword, he's just given us the schematics for a sword. But we're still not done with bloody Arafu yet. 
And here's something I bet you never know. After you go back and speak to Vance, once Blood Ties is completed, and thus he gives you the line that Alan's going to move to Arafu, this house is no longer boarded up. And there we go. There's the lad. He just lives in this house, guarding the town. The lad himself doesn't have anything to say to you. Hey, welcome back. Literally just a generic welcome. However, there is a reason to come into this house, which is uh, he's got a skill book right here. Just going to take your book round the corner and there we go. One free skill book for me. And on top of that, head back into town and uh, yes indeed, the other people who live in Arafo, who are for the most part completely bloody useless and uninteresting, one of them just got a bit more interesting actually. Here we go, find Karen, and she's got a bit of useful help for ya. There are a few interesting places around here I've heard about. I don't know if they'll help you or not, but you're welcome to them. And it's not just nearby either. It's like the entire western side of the map she adds a whole bunch of interesting bits and pieces. Still, let's not worry about those for now, but uh, yes, in another episode that could make a rather interesting journey even further to the west, potentially. And there's one final fascinating sting in the tale too, which is if you now go back to the West household, Ian is indeed present and he can fill you in a bit on his background as a not cannibal because we don't use that word. I was about 10 years old and I was playing with Lucy down under the overpass. We loved throwing rocks in the water. We saw some wastelander trying to break open the Brahmin pens and steal one of them, so I ran over and told him to stop. He just laughed and pushed me away. When I fell, suddenly my head started to hurt, and my eyes got all blurry. It was almost like I blacked out. Next thing I know, Lucy was pulling me off the guy. I had ripped his throat open with my teeth. So in fact, Lucy knew something about this. In fact, if we keep going through the other options, she knew quite a lot. Lucy said Mom and Dad would never have understood. She told me to keep what I did a secret, and that she'd try and help me. Thanks to Lucy, she was able to stop that from ever happening again for years. Every time I'd feel the hunger, she'd hold on to me and not let go. After a while, the hunger almost seemed to go away until, well... So, Lucy knew that Ian West sometimes went into a bit of a cannibalistic frenzy, which could only be sorted out by her helping him through it. And then she left, and her parents have ended up, you know, very much dead and Ian is alive. So you'd think now if we went back to Lucy, she might reveal a final bit of the story, wouldn't you? Oh, and welcome to the grand anti-climax of the episode. I was just on my way to have a chat with Lucy to wrap all this up once and for all. I was selling all that scrap metal to Walter and that has just pushed me into level 8 for real. I just realised I already had lockpick at 45. I've spent this entire episode waiting to get to level 8 so I could boost lockpick to 45. But no, it was already over 45. Bloody genius. Right, get it to 50, because why not? Then again, you know what? I'm wearing a hat. 48 will be absolutely A-OK. -okay. Everything else into guns, please. And it turns out the alternate universe was in fact a prediction on this occasion, because 100% I'm taking impartial mediation. 30 points of speech for free, that is huge. So, as I apparently could have done at any bloody point this episode, inside Evan King's house we do indeed have a bobblehead. Beautiful. So, okay, everything degrades 10% slower. That is nice. And one more thing, the shish kebab, which is in fact very easy to put together. Simply find the bent in the house and right up the sides you have got literally everything you need. You've got yourself a lawnmower for the blade right there, one leaf blower here, one motorcycle gas tank, one motorcycle handbrake. I did not need the leaf blower, just a pilot light, but that's fine, there's an oven inside, we will be a-okay. There we go, job done. And there we go, okay, I am not uh, strong enough to use it, but screw it. That is not bad. For three weight, 24 damage, DPS 62, not bad, not bad at all. And to be honest, it's all worth it for just the badassness of holding a flaming sword. 
So, Lucy, remember how you gave me a letter to deliver to your family, who you were so worried about? Then I told you both your parents were dead, and you told me it was really important I find out precisely what happened to Ian, who it now turns out you knew all along was a secret cannibal. Well, it turns out he was the one that killed your parents, and I'm assuming you're going to have something to say about that. Oh, thank you for remembering. With everything that's going on... I almost forgot about it. You have no idea how much this means to me. Thanks so much. Yeah, that's actually it. I know we've had seven endings to Blood Ties so far, but this is the actual, real, final word on the matter. Lucy West sort of forgot about, you know, her murdered parents and her one remaining family member. And there is no indication whatsoever she's going to travel to Arafu. She barely even seems to care. Even though the only reason Ian left the family was because he recognised that Lucy loved him. And also that Lucy must be as horribly traumatised by this whole situation as he was. Turns out no. She basically forgot she asked me to do it. She's just chilling out here in Megaton. It's... It's one hell of a weird ending. I think like possibly someone forgot to write the proper ending to Lucy West because based on everything Ian says and the way the mission resolves and how she reacts if you tell her about her murdered parents, it really feels like she should be saying more right now than, oh yeah, I'd kind of forgotten about that. But uh, yeah, that's it. That's how Blood Ties ends with Lucy West basically forgetting she ever told you to do it in the first place. So there we go, the final true baffling ending to Blood Ties and all that incredible lack of bombshell. How about we wrap things up there? Because next time, as we're back in Megaton already, how about we go and pay a visit to Moira? After all, there's a whole new chapter to the Wasteland Survival Guide that needs to be completed. And uh, would you believe some of it feeds right back into some of the stuff we saw today. So, okay, interesting secrets buried away in the Wasteland coming up next week. And if we've got time, maybe we'll even nip into Rivet City and start paying attention to some of the fascinating stuff that's going on there as well. Hopefully, you are looking forward to that. But in the meantime... I've been John, this has been many a true nerd, and this has been Fallout, Tale of Two Wastelands. Thank you very much, and goodbye. If we just hide the bodies, nobody needs to know about this. Yes! My stupid, stupid plan has worked! It turns out I'm a genius! The giant rat scorpion is not gone! Oh, hang on, there's, there's more yet, though. I'm still being very shocked. Guys, where's the NCR? Nobody needs to know.